Hello, hello, welcome back to P-Storm. I am Pluvius Lelon, and today we're playing Ghost Trick. So when we last left off, we had just uh, busted Jode out of prison. Now we're uh, headed for the Justice Minister's office. To, to help Lynn stop the execution that we already... <clears throat> now that my assignment to stop the execution had ended in such an unsatisfactory way, I decided to go see Lynn at the Justice Minister's office. Detective Joad's story about this other murder weighs on me heavily. Should I tell Lynn about it? I just don't know. This time, Lynn isn't dead, but the atmosphere makes me think it might be too soon to count my blessings just yet. Hmm. I'm glad Lynn isn't dead. But what in the world is she doing? Then again, do I really want to know? She might be doing her impression of Monica Lewinsky. Uh, no, 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 not that. Oh. Uh. Hey, can you hear me? Hmm. He's dead, but he still seems to be unconscious. Hey, there you are. What kind of greeting is that? Been shoving somebody's poor soul out of the way just like that? I gotta say, though, no matter where you go, somebody always seems to turn up dead. Sorry about that. Who is it this time? Is this the Justice Minister? Yeah, the man who signed the order to carry out Detective Jode's execution. He was already dead when I got here. Oh boy, wonder what happened this time. Well, and? How did it go? Was Detective Jode still alive? He had already been executed by the time I got there. I did manage to save him, but... You did? Oh, I'm so glad. Wait a minute, did you say but? Yeah, I did, what about it? I told Lynn about my adventure at the prison. About that other murder, though. I couldn't bring myself to tell her. Inspector Cabanella arrested Detective Jode? I can't believe it! Inspector Cabanella would never betray Detective Jode. Just so you know, Detective Jode himself said it was the right thing to do. Anyway, I better take care of the Justice Minister here. Right. And I have lots of questions for him, too. Back we go, then, to four minutes before his death. Okay, so he's just, uh, just signing documents. Emma! Oh, excuse me. What? All right. I'll do as you say. This is terrible. Why doesn't she answer? You are having a heart attack. Stay relaxed and breathe <laughs> normally. Seek immediate medical aid. Do not resume physical Water. <laughs> you are having a heart attack. Stay relaxed and continue breathing normally. 
Man, you're so clumsy. It's almost like you Yeah. It's almost like you're dying or something. Such a foolish man. Oh, you woke up? He's a contradiction. Contradiction? The more we search for the truth, the further into dilemma we fall. The world of men is steeped in contradictions. If we choose this, we can't have that. If a man tries to have his medicine bottle and water pitcher too, he loses both. No, oh, I don't know. To me, it looks like you could have had both of those things just now. He didn't know the truth about the world. That's why he died. Such a foolish man. Or maybe I should say a pathetic man. That's the more fitting word. I don't think this guy gets it yet. That the foolish and pathetic man is him. Is that what they call a contradiction? By the way, what's your name? Just call me a seeker of truth. Sidestepped that one, didn't he? No need to think too hard about this one. All I have to do is get his medicine to him. Pretty simple. But there's one more thing that concerns me. What was that telephone call the Justice Minister got all about? It was... It was right after that... It was right after that that his health took an instant downturn. I've never seen such a foolish, pathetic, and strange man. Uh, I think you'd better stop there. Emma! Oh, excuse me. Forgive me for calling so late, Mr. Minister. Who is this? How'd you get this number? We have your daughter. Uh, who is this? Emily's tutor? Would a tutor call you at this hour? No. I'll say it one more time. We have your daughter. What? My daughter? Is she alright? Tell me she's alright. Here for yourself. Papa, he Papa, help! I've gotta be killed! What do you want? What are your demands? I believe we already made our demand known the other day. Oh, so it was you. And have you complied? Has the execution been carried out? I, I didn't do it because of your demand, I did it because that's my job. Yes, yes, of course. They should be contacting me any minute now with the confirmation. There's no need for this kidnapping. We're very thorough. You do well to remember that. Uh. And of course it goes without saying we're watching you. If this information leaves that room, you'll never see your daughter again. I trust you understand that. Don't tell the police, is that it? Exactly. All you have to do is your job. Alright, I'll do as you say. I'll make sure the execution is carried out tonight. You have my word. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's... There's nothing we can really do there, so... This is terrible! A kidnapping, huh? Once again, I'm not sure I know what the word means. But it's apparently the cause of the minister's attack. Such a useless man. Huh? A useless man caught up in a useless case. Why doesn't he understand that? Anyway, we only have four minutes here. I better do something about that medicine.
So this medicine stops the minister's attacks, huh? If I could, I'd spill them all onto his desk right now. But unfortunately, I can't even open the cap. What a shabby excuse for a man. Huh? He wears his important-looking uniform and sits working at his stately desk. But what does he have inside? Nothing. A miserable, shabby excuse for a man. I think you've already said quite enough. I have to call my wife. I have to see if it's true. Maybe they called the wrong person. <clears throat> the minister doesn't accept the truth easily. He's morally bankrupt. Anyway, er, okay, now you're taking it too far. His wife won't answer, but for his wife won't answer for some reason. Hmm. A wife who doesn't answer her phone. I think I know who that is. A morally bankrupt man deserves a morally bankrupt wife. Why doesn't that man understand that? Now I'm sorry I ever brought this guy along. It's no use. The line isn't working. Hmm. Apparently it only works if the other party answers. Why doesn't she answer? I'm not, I'm not doing all those noises again. It hurts my throat. You are having a heart attack. <laughs> Stay relaxed and... Uh oh, here it comes. His worry and anxiety have reached their peak. Such a disgraceful man. Huh? If one lives his life in fits, he's bound to be plagued by fits. It's so simple. Why doesn't he understand? But there wasn't a chance to rescue him before now. It's not over yet, though. I can't give up now. Continue breathing. Normal. Safe immediate medical aid. Do not resist in physical activity. You are having a heart attack. Okay, let's uh, see if we can get up here. Yeah, swing that sword. Oh, whoops. I just have to get this medicine to the minister. But, hmm. There are only a few seconds left. It isn't enough time. Such a short-sighted man. Huh? Happiness escapes us just as we're about to pull it in. We have to grab it while we can. Not only happiness, but dreams, love, and hope, too. Clearly, someone here is overly naive. Anyway, there isn't enough time to do anything in this state. I think I better rethink this from the beginning. If he could just get some of that water, he might feel a little bit better. Did you just say something constructive? Alright, yeah, I guess uh, start over then. I wish there was a fast-forward option. Okay, let's, uh... I think when he's going for the water, we'll flap the flag to stop it from falling over. You are having a heart attack. Stay relaxed and continue breathing normally. Seek immediate medical aid. Do not resume physical activity. You are having a heart attack. Stay relaxed and continue breathing normally. Seek immediate medical aid. Do not resume physical activity. You are having a heart attack. Stay <laughs> relaxed and, and continue okay. breathing normally.
There, that should help. At least now he's had some water. He's still breathing, apparently. But he looks far from recovered, unfortunately. Such a wishy-washy man. Huh? He can't make up his mind whether to live or die. That's how he lives his life. Okay. At least now I bought some time to get his medicine to him. Okay. I've never seen anybody drink water the way this man just did. The water pitcher's completely empty. He's an empty vessel of a man. Huh? An empty, withered man. Where's his oasis? This guy is really starting to get... This guy is a really starting to get on my nerves. Okay, I can't get up to the ceiling fan from here. I can't use the phone lines right now. What a befitting room for this man. Huh? It looks stately, but it's filled with nothing but useless trash. When in the past, I can only use the line when the phone is being used to make a call. I guess I better find another path. The minister's fate has changed, but the situation still seems the same. I can't move anywhere now. Did I miss something? I think I saw a path just for a second while the minister was drinking the water. Maybe I should start over from the beginning. Okay, so uh, possess the water. Possess the flag. Okay, just wait for it. Okay, goes for the medicine. Knocks it over. Goes for the water. Damn it! I hit the button too early. Okay, I, ha I have an idea of what I'm supposed to do. I just gotta get the timing right like I did last time. Okay. Possess the water jug. Okay, I think I can get up to the... Yes. Okay, spin that shit harder. Spin harder, daddy. Possess the paper. And let it fly. Alright. Okay, time for the next step. Now, about this medicine bottle. If the minister is going to make a full recovery, I have to deliver this thing to him. But how's a ghost with no hands or feet supposed to do that? I guess I'll just have to use my head instead. Alright. Undo the frame hanger. Whoa. Turn this. Rock this. That was really loud. That urn's a lot heavier than it looks. It's made out of some pretty thick iron. I wouldn't want that to drop on my foot. But I don't have feet, so I guess I don't have to worry. Ok, 
Okay, drop this. Oh, I see what I gotta do. Okay. Spin that globe. Swing the sword. Hmm, that looks really good. If only the medicine bottle was under that swing. I bet it would go flying, but to the wrong side of the room. I think I'm starting to see a plan here. Okay, uh, yeah, I think I fucked up. Alright, let's try it again. Alright, so I'm in the ceiling van. Just possess that paper. Okay, yeah, 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 next step. Come on. Alright. Salute. Turn that. Drop that. Not yet. Okay, I think what I'll do... Okay, turn this around. Spin it! Yeah! Drop that shit. Oh, whoops. Oh, no, I can still get it. It's a pretty light frame for its size. There sure are a lot of things that can fall down in this room. He's a fallen man. Huh? He deserves to have everything come tumbling down on his head. I don't know what... I don't know about Fallen Man, but you talk about him like he's your Fall Guy. I guess the key here is what order the objects are dropped in. Okay, okay, I think I'm, think I'm, think I'm starting to see something here. This thing's pretty heavy. It's got a good swing to it. It's sharp enough to cut the medicine bottle in two, though. It's not long enough, is it? Such a reckless man. Huh? Only cowards like to keep their weapons around. What a truly dangerous thing to have around. In any case... I bet I could use this sword somehow. Mmm. Okay. I have an idea. Yep. Yep. Sp swung it the wrong way. I remember this be like, the last time I played this was about 12 years ago, but I remember this being one of the hardest chapters in the game. And there is so much text you have to sit through every time you restart. Setup is also a bitch. Alright. Get that. Get that. Okay, let me just make sure right now. There we go. Okay. Swing your arms from side to side. Damn it! Hmm. That was so close. If the swing had just a little more reach to it, I think I'd better... I think I'd better look for something else. Yeah, you gotta get it, like, just right. You can't make one fucking mistake here. Okay. Raise the arm. 
impale that fruit. Drop the sword. At ease. Close the curtain. I said close the curtain. Turn the thing. And then you spin it. Spin it to win it. Drop the thing. Okay. If I roll... Maybe. Just maybe. Okay. Okay, I think I've got it now. The key is to not impale the fruit. Keep that fruit bowl nice and weighted. I got it this time. Drop the thing. Turn this. But leave it alone for now. Close the curtain. Salute. Turn the thing. Oh no, wait. Uh yeah, don't don't turn the thing. Yeah, is this is this it? No, that was that was wrong. Okay, this time for sure, this is the run. Okay, I have to remember, the papers don't blow in the wind right away. You gotta, yeah, blow them yourself. That's what she said. Do that. Turn that. Do that. Bam. Okay. Turn the globe stand. Spin the globe. Drop the frame. Yeah. Roll the globe. Open the curtain once again. And our Rube Goldberg, Rube Goldberg machine is complete. Ha <laughs> ha! Here you go, Mr. Minister. my medicine. Ugh. Okay, now you're gonna die either way. <laughs> there. The minister finally took his medicine. I think he maybe even took too much of the medicine. Such a greedy man. Huh? He's supposed to take two capsules with water. Why doesn't he know that? Uh, cut the guy some slack. There, see? Oh, he's got, got the same voice as the, uh, the, the, the chicken kitchen chef. Whew, that was a lot of work. Well, hopefully this taught him a lesson. Huh? He greatly underestimated the de his dependence on his medicine. I hope he learned something from this experience. First, know yourself. That's the key to everything. I think you need to listen to your own advice. 
Anyway, let's go back to the world of the present. And so the Justice Minister is now back to life. But the furrows on his brow are even deeper now. And apparently our lady detective is the in the present and apparently our lady detective is the present cause of those furrows. Look, detective. He was sentenced after a fair trial, and the man himself wants to be executed. But there was no evidence. All they had was his own confession. But it was no ordinary confession. It was the confession of an esteemed detective. Stay back. I told you I don't want anyone coming near me. Mr. Minister, please listen to me. I might be able to gather new evidence in that case tonight. What? So please, please, just give me a little more time. I just got a call from the prison. Your death row convict apparently just escaped. Unfortunately, after all this time, it seems he now wants to dodge his punishment. But... When he's apprehended, his sentence will be carried out. Tonight. No. But when the sentence was handed down, you were against enforcing the death penalty. So why did you sign the order all of a sudden? Well, I... I was simply performing my duty as Justice Minister. That's all there is to it. Then looks like she's about to rip into the Justice Minister. I think she's forgotten all about me. I think I'll send her a little signal. Right on the ass! Right on the ass! Damn, I missed. Cecil, there you are. Sounds like the minister is being very stubborn. That's right, he is. Maybe we shouldn't have saved him after all. The minister has to have the execution carried out tonight. And he has a very good reason for it. A good reason? I told Lynn what I had learned about the kidnapping. K kidnapping They kidnapped the Justice Minister's daughter? Apparently. Oh my goodness. But still... That's still no reason to hurry forward to the execution. Why don't you go ahead and say that to the Justice Minister, then? Hmm. The poor man. I hate to do that to him. Oh, by the way, do you think you could carry me? Oh, right, sure. Not very handy, is it, having no legs? <laughs> you can call me Chaos. What are you gonna do with that globe? Crack me in the head with it? Oh, this? Uh, <laughs> pay no attention to this. It's kinda hard not to pay attention to it. By the way, please pardon me if this is a silly question. Were you talking to somebody just now? But of course not, right? I mean, there's no such thing as ghosts, right? Are you talking about me? Gah! No, there's no such thing. This is a dream. It's nothing but a dream. Don't you remember me? My dream is talking to me. Hmm. So now I'm a dream, huh? Maybe you should call me Titus. Mr. Minister? We know. We know about your daughter. She was kidnapped, wasn't she? 
And if the execution doesn't take place tonight, you won't see her again. <laughs> your medicine, you know, the medicine that you emptied the entire bottle into your fucking gullet. Oh, what am I gonna do? The death row prisoner has escaped. If he isn't executed tonight, my daughter, my Emily. But what if the execution isn't the right thing to do? Uh, uh, Come on, Lynn. If you keep pressing like that, he's gonna die again. What can I do then? We have to do something about that kidnapping. Until we do that, it'll be impossible to get the Minister on our side. That's the way I see it. I think I'll start by gathering info on the kidnapping. In the only way I know how. Yep. Get on that phone! Uh, take it over to... That place. I really should pay the kidnapper's hideout a visit. After all, we d if we want the Justice Minister to come around, we have to solve this problem first. I feel like I'm slowly moving away from my own mystery, but I'm not the kind of guy who can abandon a little lady in trouble, so I guess I'm in this for a little while longer. All right. And yeah, I'm pretty sure that was the hardest chapter in the game that I just cleared. <laughs> so hopefully it'll be smooth sailing from here, but uh, in the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, then no further actions required on your part. And we'll see you next episode.